go. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, let me uh, minimize. So I'll, I'll just leave that up now. That, that's actually quite helpful to see who we have uh, attending virtually. So uh, welcome everyone to uh, the Little Bay Waterline uh, meeting to uh, discuss uh, the Little Bay Waterline project for the city of Portsmouth and the Portsmouth uh, Regional Water System. I'll introduce myself. Uh, I am Brian Getz, Deputy Director of Public Works um, in charge of uh, the water system, water waste, water, stormwater. Um, with me tonight uh, with the city, we have um, attorney um, Trevor McCord, who's a staff attorney working with us on, on the project. Um, also Al Pratt, our water resources manager in charge of the water system um, is here. We've got Britt Ekstrom um, from Wright Pierce, our design consultant. And uh, Darren Larry from Wright Pierce is our design engineer, project manager, uh, construction uh, guru. So uh, um, you know, they'll both be here to give you an overview of the project, uh, virtually uh, making sure technically we're coming through um, is Zach Cronin, our assistant uh, city engineer. Um, and uh, this, this meeting um, is, is informational. For the most part, what we'd like to do is provide Wright Pierce the opportunity to give everybody an overview of the project, status of what we're doing. Um, then, uh, since it's the focus is aquaculture, we'd like to have questions first from um, those uh, fishery people uh, with those questions, be they regulators or uh, fishery uh, concerned people. And then we'd like to just open it up uh, in general after that. Uh, if, if you don't all know what this project is about, um, I'll just give you the quickest overview um, and there'll be a, a little more detail with maps in the presentation, which helps everybody orient. Um, but many of you probably aware the Portsmouth water system uh, gets a, a very much a, a big portion, about 65 to 70% of its water originates in the town of Madbury. Uh, from either the Bellamy Reservoir, or we have uh, three wells, soon to be four wells, located in uh, Badbury at our water treatment facility. All of that water is piped through a pipeline that runs uh, down into Durham, um, crosses at Emory Farm, and then under Route 4 into um, the uh, town of Durham's Wagon Hill Farm, and then down to the shoreline and under a little bay and then crosses up to Newington at Fox Point and moves on to um, a booster station, which is located adjacent to the highway um, on uh, the, uh, the turnpike. So if you're driving by the turnpike and you see a tank there that is soon to be painted because you'll see the, the peeling uh, paint, but the primer is still holding very well, um, that's where the water ends up. Uh, the pipeline itself does split when it gets down to the water, and there are two 20-inch lines. It's a 24-inch line, single line, that goes down to that point. Uh, on the Durham side, it splits. There are two vaults and uh, two pipelines that run across the bay. We've done a significant amount of preliminary work. Initially, it was an assessment to see um, what could be done to perhaps rehabilitate in kind the existing pipes that are there um, with a lot of field work and, and analysis from the engineers, it was determined the best course of action was actually um, to put a brand new third pipe in um, due to the age over 60 years of the uh, existing two pipes in there. And then also the, the real delicate nature of having to deal with working on a pipeline while water is still being um, piped and pumped into the system. So um, we've, we've spent quite a bit of time, Wright Pierce has been engaged as engineer for a couple of years now, and uh, we are in the midst of uh, finalizing what we hope will be a permit for us to be able to go to bid next summer and this time next year uh, be constructing. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Darren and Britt and, um, 
And uh, Zach, just let me know if we're coming through good. Um, he's listening to us uh, out there and uh, we'll try to speak into our microphones. And again, uh, please hold your questions till um, after uh, the presentation, which will probably only take about 10 minutes and then we'll, uh, we'll take, take questions after that. Well, thank you, Brian. Uh, this is Darren at Wright Pierce. Um, I've been involved on the project for several years, helping out Portsmouth. Um, we were asked by New Hampshire DES to set up a meeting to talk about fisheries and you know, aquaculture here in the Bay. And I think I'm actually going to hand it over to Britt to, uh, to run through and, and be available for any technical questions for the uh, installation of the pipeline. Uh, so, go ahead, Britt. All right. Thank you. Um, if I'm not speaking loud enough, please do interrupt me. Hopefully the microphone is catching me where I can see where I'm listening in. Um, so Brian gave a really excellent summary. Um, I'm gonna probably review uh, a few of those points as we get into the presentation here, but um, that was uh, an excellent start. So a uh, quick overview of our presentation tonight. We've already covered the introductions. Going to talk a little bit more about the existing conditions and need for the project, um, and then we'll get into describing the proposed project. Uh, we've, we've provided our contact information. Should you want to reach out after the meeting um, with any additional questions, and then we'll get into receiving the questions. So this um, map here shows the general project area. As Brian mentioned, it's um, in between. Um, Durham land and um, Fox Point and Newington. Uh, the next slide zooms in a little bit more on the project area. And this slide, we show the um, proposed uh, pipeline area in that, that black line. Uh, and then the blue boxes represent the licensed aquaculture sites in the vicinity of the project area. Yep. But, um, there you go, Brett. <laughs> I'm going to just virtually for all of us, since I'm running the show here too, I will uh, look at chat. Um, it would be a good place for people to start putting questions in the chat if they have questions. And again, we'll get to those as once we get through the presentation. Okay, great. Thank you, Marcia. I will try to speak up a little bit more too. All right, so as um, Brian mentioned, the city owns a water main all the way from Madbury to the Newington Booster Station. The section here in orange um, is, are the two 20 inch cast iron pipes that, are, um, that we're proposing to um, install a new pipeline in between um, because um, the city has, as Brian mentioned, done a lot of investigation work actually completed a dive inspection of this pipeline um, in 2016 and found that um, the pipe had become exposed in some areas and there was significant pitting um, found to have occurred in the pipe. And um, it's estimated that section loss might be as much as 50% in, in some of the areas. And then also, as, as Brian mentioned, the valves on either side of the um, pipeline on the shore are inoperable. So um, if, if, if there was a, um, you know, any kind of emergency, it does make it difficult to separate, um, isolate one of those lines. So for that reason, um, and the age and condition of the pipe, the decision has been made to place a new pipe in between the two existing pipelines. So this slide here is to start to describe what the proposed project area looks like. We're showing a new 24-inch um, pipeline that's going to be installed in between the two existing pipelines. There's going to be Connection on, on either shore uh, to that existing concrete pipe that, is, um, that, that would happen outside of the water. 
Um, the area that you see on here shown in blue is the area where we're proposing to um, bury the new pipeline. Um, and then in between those two areas, we're in the bay, the pipeline will be um, resting on the bottom of the bay. In the blue areas there, we're proposing a temporary buffer dam system during the installation of the pipeline. Uh, and then parallel to that copper dam will be a trestle system that will be used to um, access the uh, pipeline. And this is a, a sample picture of a similar um, copper dam system and trestle system that we're proposing for this project. The coffer dam on the Durham side is going to extend approximately 50 feet into the bay. And then on the Lewington side, it'd be approximately 40 to 50 feet. Um, and, and the reason we're burying the pipeline in those areas is to protect the pipeline, um, keep it um, protected from anchor drag and currents um, and any of those types of impacts. The pod installation of the pipeline, the copper dam and trestles are going to be removed. So those are going to just temporary construction. Um, our, our contract documents for the project are going to cover, um, include a number of requirements that the contractor that's selected for the project is um, going to be required to meet uh, in order to um, reduce the risk of, of water quality violations. Um, we're going to have full time construction observation uh, project to um, confirm that the, the work is being completed in accordance with those contract documents. We're going to be requiring the contractor to do daily turbidity monitoring, um, as well as um, once the construction is done, the uh, trestle system and copper dam are being removed, and the pipelines are installed in shore, and there's going to be restoration of all the areas that have been impacted by the construction. Um, so a couple more notes on construction here. Um, we are proposing um, that the, there's going to be temporary disturbance on the shoreline and the shipping crossing. Um, the, um, we're, we're also proposing that the, the dunes and lengths the pipeline is floated out into the, the waterway um, where it's, it's um, installed into the trench that was constructed. And the primary construction staging area is proposed on the Newington side of the Fox Point uh, property. So the, um, the anticipated schedule for the project is it is subject to permitting conditions and bidding results um, contractors approach to completing the work but um, the current anticipated schedule is to finalize the design and permitting this winter um, bidding in June of 2022 and then the anticipated construction would be starting with the mobilization of the setup um, on shore October to December in water work is proposed December to March, um, and then you know, pipeline installation would follow along with that, and then site restoration in the spring of 2023. So, with that, we've, we've provided our contact information here, and um, we can um, get into um, answering any questions you might have. I think with that, I'll have to. Uh, what I can do is just to promote everybody to a panelist so they can join us here. And I think, as Brian mentioned at the start, we would, we would very much like to have any of the fisheries questions. Ask first if there are any fisheries questions. Yeah, I'm in the process of getting everybody 
<laughs> everybody, everybody into the meeting here virtually. So uh, we'll, we'll hold for a second here while we let people in. If you if you want to um, leave your cameras on on mute, that's fine. Um, and if you want to. No, there we go. Doesn't want to go so quick to ship people over. <laughs> I don't know, Kristen's one of our aquaculture people. Somehow. Speakers on. Anybody out there? There we go. I mean, there we go. I think we have somebody that's jumped in. <laughs> well, Brian, this is Marsha Brown. I figured while you were invite or adding people, can I just ask a question to Britt? Sure. Okay. Um, and Britt, I'm sorry, I could not hear some of the words in your sentences. And uh, you had stated that you would be floating or something would be floating out into the waterway. I think you had a picture of a berm, but I, I need a, you to fill in what the rest of that sentence was. Thank you. Sure, I, and I apologize. I hope you can hear me now, Marsha. Um, I think that when I mentioned floating something out, that was um, in relation to a slide we had up there with a, an actual pipeline from another project that was being floated out into the waterway. So um, the proposed installation method here is to install the copper dam on either side, complete the excavation for the pipe trench in either copper dam. And then while that's happening, the pipeline is gonna be, the pipe sections come um, in smaller lengths. So it's gonna need to be welded together on land. And then that, the Whole length of the pipeline will be assembled on land and then it needs to be pulled out into the bay, um, moved into position, and then it's, it's actually filled with water and then it sinks down into the, the two trenches on either side and onto the bottom of the bay. So that the floating thing was actually the, the pipeline that I was talking about. And that um, is a relatively um, quick process in relation to the rest of the project. The intent is not to have the water line floating out there for a long time. It's to, to bring it out, get it in position, and sink it. Uh, Brian, I'm just I'm looking to you to be, a mo the, I guess, the moderator role, and I didn't want to be jumping in um, out of order. If I could ask a follow up. Certainly, I, I don't see anybody else unmuted at the moment. Um, I attempted to bring uh, Craig Comstock and, and Janet Mackey into uh, as panelists. Somehow, Zoom's not letting that happen. So, if either of the two of you out there um, still as attendees uh, have some questions, just put them into the chat. Um, so, Marcia, feel free to, to, to follow up, I guess. Yep, and so on this floating of the pipeline, and I understand that the pipeline is going to be assembled on the Newington side, and so floating into place. So how is that going to reach the Durham side? So I, I think I'm gonna take that yeah. one from Britt. Move, you, move your mic close to you there. So, sorry, this is, uh, this is Darren right here. Um, in general, when, when we do this, um, many times the contractor will assemble the pipeline in longer lengths. So we have about a 3,000 foot crossing here. We will probably install three 1,000 foot pieces with, um, and then 
quickly during one or two days fuse the last few pieces together so that the long links are all together. And then usually they'll hit the, the dead tide in between the ingoing and outgoing tides and use a, a tugboat or a barge to pull the pipeline across to the river, get it into place, anchor it on both sides. And this is with, we always have the Coast Guard and everything involved when we when we do these, these periods. And then they begin to fill it with water and sink it into position using um, boats and barges across the bay to keep it in place. Thank you, and let's hope that um, that dead tide is not at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I have no further questions at this moment, but I'm going to reach out to my client. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Hi, Brian. Mark Bellwoho here. Hey, thank you. Yes. I was wondering if if um, someone could go over the schedule again. I. I, that, that the slide that showed the schedule uh, came down before I was able to get it all. And related to that, uh, will we be able to get a PDF of the slides? Uh, certainly, I've got um, everybody that was signed up, signed up via email, so I can uh, uh, send out a, a copy of this. But let me, let me pull up the... Uh, uh, I'll share the screen again and go back. Um, so that's, I'll just, I'll leave this slide up for a little bit. Um, so yeah, so, so we're in final design and permitting. Um, it is um, still yet to come will be, I, I believe, a, a final, will have to be a, a public meeting, which will be a, a second um, Zoom, uh, more official, I guess, including uh, the regulators. But we do hope to, by uh, spring of, of next year, uh, have the permit in hand, and then that way we can finalize our bidding documents because there may be some some changes prior uh, to uh, you know, getting the permit. Um, right now, um, design we're, we're fairly comfortable with. Um, it's just a matter of uh, you know, finalizing things. We do intend to bid it in June, and the reason for that is given COVID and everything that's happened um, for pipeline, uh, this is strictly the, the material itself. And um, we were concerned that if we bid it too close to construction, which is actually more normal to what contractors do, they'll bid on a project and they might start it, you know, two weeks later almost sometimes. But this one uh, we would, would bid and uh, have the contractor actually purchase the, the pipe early on because we, we think the lead time, Darren, what did you say? It could be up to three, three months, months now three, for three months. And, and it's, it's pipeline, the concrete anchors, the valves, yeah. uh, many of the accessories right now for pipeline projects are seeing long lead times. Valves in particular are very long. So, so that, you know, would, if we, if we get a contractor, we did in June, we would get a contractor sometime in July, um, and then that provides us a couple months for them to order the pipe. And then, you know, mobilization, um, there will be certainly, as you can see with the trellises and stuff, there'll be some site work before they, you know, are ready to, to start doing the pipe work. So, um, you know, the in water work, um, the actual construction is only going to, with the pipe, it's not going to be very long, right, there. Um, well, we have a three month in water work window, so we're making them work within that window. So, yeah. But we expect crews on both sides working simultaneously to, to meet that in work window. So, with that schedule, Brian, um, what is the uh, time period within which you would need access to my client's property. Is that the new the Durham side? The Durham side. Um, Durham side, yeah. Yeah, you know, we would expect the contractor would want to be getting in there late September, October to get set up through the March um, takedown of the, of the trestle and the proper dam system.
and then re restoration would follow in the spring of 23. Yeah, you you know, of course, in March, February, and March, very hard to get good surface restoration, and we want really good surface restoration. So we'll we'll require them to do the majority of the surface restoration once we get into good weather in the spring. Yeah. Thank you. This is Marsha. I'm back with another question, if I'm allowed. Sure. Regarding the cofferdam, uh, the two issues, um, can anyone speak noise and how long it takes to install that cofferdam? So my, this is Darren again at Right Pierce. Um, my conversations with um, Fleming was one of the installers that, that builds this type of system. Um, first of all, as far as noise, the, the method that they do generally with these copper dams, instead of a, a sheet pile driver that pounds, this is a vibratory driver. So it doesn't make that pounding noise that you're used to hearing with the old pile drivers. This is a hydraulic vibratory sheet pile installer. So it doesn't have quite the impact with the noise that the old um, pounding pile drivers had. So, so yes, there is some noise, but it's a different, it's a different uh, method of installation than, than what people are used to with, uh, with old sheet pile driving. So I would say it's definitely not as noisy as the pounding sheet pile driver used to be. Timing wise, they expected um, the coffer dam installation to take four or five weeks um, with the trestle and the copper dam. Um, the same contractor installed one for me on the Kennebec River last year. And they ended up being a week early from the time that they expected they got good weather in the winter and were able to put it in. So I would expect month, month and a half of installation of the, of the copper dam. So. If I can have a follow-up on um, the coffer dam, what months then are we looking at for that installation? Is that October? Well, we can't do the in-water. When's the first date we can get in water? That's November. November 15th would be the start. So if they're not allowed to work in the water before November 15th. So it would be mid-November installation of the coffer dam through the end of December and into January and then installation of the pipeline in February, and then removal of the coffer dams and, and um, trestle system in March, and in February. Thank you. My mistake in forgetting the November 15 for wetlands. Thank you. See if we anybody else uh, unmute. If you have any other questions uh, out there, yeah, uh, this is uh, Brian Janako. I'm a oyster farmer. I own the farm that is directly south of the Fox Point site, and. Uh, you know, the only concerns for me, obviously, are going to be if there's water quality issues and how those are contained. Um, that is an area that you get um, a pretty good swirl on an incoming tide, and basically anything that's carried around that corner goes directly onto my farm and impacts my farm. So I guess the question is, how am I going to know um, if there is a water quality violation and who will be in charge of monitoring that for for the farms that are located nearby. So um, we are going to be requiring the contractor to do daily turbidity monitoring. Um, they'll need to going to monitor the um, the turbidity of the water before they start and then um, several times during the workday to confirm that they're not. Um, changing that water written significantly during the construction. Um, if we find that they are, then they're going to need to revise their, their practices so that doesn't continue to happen. Um, and then 
in terms of um, so so Britt, can you just speak closer into the oh, mic <laughs> yes sorry i'll repeat that my apologies um so we are going to be requiring the contractor to do daily turbidity monitoring so they're, they're going to need to be monitoring several times during the day to confirm that their um their operations their practices are, are not um, causing an, an increase of um, of turbidity and if they are then they're going to need to revise their practices um, to to um, minimize that that change in turbidity um, and then in terms of actual water quality testing um, my understanding is that Chris Nash is going to continue to, to do the sampling that they do in the area and um, we'll be making that determination for the Oyster Harbor for, for its usual practices. Um, and then, you know, during construction too, we're, um, if we were to have some kind of a water quality violation, then we would certainly be notified. Um, folks of that, so you can be aware of that. Brian, this is Chris Nash. I can elaborate a little bit on that if this is a good time. Perfect. Um, to answer Brian Janako's question, we're going to ask DES wetlands to require in the wetlands permit that uh, the DES shellfish program be informed of when the in-water activities are occurring so that we can plan uh, our own independent sampling of uh, water column fecal coliform, uh, much like we have done on other dredging projects, um, such as what happened up in the Oyster River, um, as well as uh, during the Eversource Seacoast Reliability Project. And as we know what the schedule is, my intention is to be informing the oyster farmers of what the plans are and what our sampling plans are so that they can maybe plan harvests just before high turbidity and possible high fecal coliform is uh, at least possible. And then we'll inform you of the sampling results as we go. If we start to see high fecal coliform numbers, we will probably begin to implement precautionary closures. Um, you know, I, I need to study a little bit more about how this project is actually going to go, but I, I anticipate doing on this project what we did for the Route 4 Bunker Creek project, um, not doing precautionary closures ahead of time, but rather um, monitoring the turbidity and the fecal coliform and then responding accordingly. Well, we'll have a resident engineer. So, yes, yeah, so there'll be full, full on site observation of the construction and the, that person will be available and depending on what our permit conditions end up being we can do daily or weekly notifications to the shellfish program and to the NFDES anyway depending on and, uh, you know, what they end up asking for from us for notification. Questions from the room? <laughs> we do have one attendee in the back. Okay. All right. Well, um, I do have, we have everyone's contact information, so I can uh, do follow up um, through the engineer. I'll uh, make sure they send out a presentation. And certainly you have our contact information as well. And we will. I continue to update everybody. Um, and we'll, uh, be ready to answer more questions as this proceeds. Did I miss anything, Trevor? Al? Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you much for attending, and uh, have have a good, safe holiday. And we'll uh, perhaps see some of you at a, a public meeting in the. Uh, 2022. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Bye -bye. it. Thank you.